welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Today's review we're going to be doing the Rebel's new uh, ME109 G6 in one thirty second scale. Okay, relatively a new kit. This one came out last year. Um, it's supposed to be all their own tooling and everything else like that, so it'd be quite interesting to have a look at. So, uh, to be honest, I've already opened the box, because this is take two. So, anyway, as you can imagine, the instructions, typical Rebel stuff. Um, we've got in here lots of call-outs um, for non-use parts, which leads me to believe immediately that there's going to be different versions of this coming along. Okay, but generally going down, you can either do the late or the early version of it. Okay, so obviously you make your decision as you're going to work your way through and just watch out for your call outs. So, anyway, usual thing we're starting off in the cockpit, um, and then obviously you've got your late or your early. Um, obviously, I think these are uh, electronics or something like that, or electronics, but you know, um, gun camera things. Uh, in fact, I don't know what they are. So if you do, let me know. It's the Mark 108 and the MG. I assume it's something to do with the gun uh, aiming system for the reticles, things like that. Anyway, so you get two versions of that, which goes in onto the floor. It's quite a nice touch because we've got the cockpit set. Um, so we've got the t um, uh, harnesses, which look like they're pre-molded in. We'll have a look for that in a moment. We've got some nice detailing going on in the walls and everything through, as you can imagine. So it is going to make an internal tub for it. You've got the late or the early um, gun sights on there to decal for your instrument panels, we probably expect. And then going in and then working our way through. We've got a spar running underneath the cockpit, obviously going to give you some wing strength and some angles. And then going right the way through. Quite a nice detailed touch for the tail wheel. Uh, we have an opened up engine bay with no engine in it, so you've got a hollow shell in there, so an aftermarket engine could be dropped in, I should think. Uh, I'm sure somebody will come along with one. And then going right the way through, obviously uh, supercharger intakes going on there, things like that. Early and late, depending if you've got the bulges on for those guns, that's what it is. It's, it's the machine gun ammo thing, I think, for the on the floor. Um, and then in, generally as you imagine, I say, I just there's lots of interchangeable parts on this. It's a nice detailed work, but I'm not sure about this fit. I think that's the top of the engine, a wing. Yes, it looks like it is. So it's gonna be a funny wing set, this going in. Be interested to see how well it goes together. So you've actually got this area here. This is the top of the wing and the bottom in one, and then it's gonna go up with the bottom complete plate of it going across. A little bit weird way of doing it. Um, early or late tails, obviously for the top of the rudder to be going on there, uh, as you can imagine. Um, we've got the elevators going on in the back, which are not, yes they are positionable, so you can position those, which would be quite a nice touch. Same with the ailerons, they're all positionable as well. We've got the flaps, um, so obviously I presume the radiator flaps are immovable as well, although don't know, probably not. Um, we've got those leading edge uh, extensions on the wings. Um, as a separate, the gear going on. Two part gear, never a fan of if I'm honest. Uh, going through, generally it seems to all be quite a nice detailed kit. If it's as good in the plastic as it is here, then you'll be okay. Separate props going on there. Okay, gear up or down, stretching sprue for canopies. Probably easier to use a bit of solid wire, something else like that. And then we've got your one. So you've got your uh, Franz door version here for 1945, or you've got your Carl Rimmett, um, uh, which is April 1944. Love mottling. You're right, it's like Marmite, this stuff. You either love it or hate it. Probably when you get the hang of mottling, it's great to do because it's quite fun. Okay, and if you're not very good at it and you're a little bit sort of, you know, hesitant, um, then it can be your worst nightmare. What I would advise is just practice. Mottling is one of those things. It's just confidence in your airbrush. So when you pull the trigger, it comes out how you want, okay? Uh, and it's confidence in yourself to put down a random pattern because it's very easy to go blob, 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 blob. Okay, but you want the squiggleness into there um, and you must imagine the way that obviously the German crews did it was probably with a can, I would have thought, or you know, a small pump system and just went like this everywhere because they didn't really care. As long as it gave an overall effect, that's what you want to do. You don't want to be sort of, you know, I'm doing this. Uh, and remember, if you go wrong with the green mottling going down there, come back with the original base color and just go over it or try and sharpen it up with that color as well um, but as I say a lot of people say to me about mottling and everything else or this is where I make a complete fall of my oh I have got it here I was gonna say if <laughs> can't find them but you can buy these these are 
can't remember whose these were now, I've had them many, many years, but these are mottling templates. So you, I think I've got all three sizes here. So you've got sort of the 172nd ones, this is 148 modeling, this is 132nd modeling. Um, and as I say, I can't remember who these were now, but I've had many, many years. So if you're not confident with it, you can use these. And you don't just have to use the scale for you, you can use a couple of these, because what I tend to do with modeling, come along and I would say, oh, we'll have a few here, but then we don't want them there. So I'll blank off areas with tape Okay, and then just carry on and use them. That's why you can probably see this one's got a little bit of color on it. I've used that particular bit, masked off all the rest of it, just spray it over. I'd say there's a couple of manufacturers do them. I think Hannant's do a version of it. I'm pretty sure Eddard do what the version. There's people out there, you can look it up, you'll find it. Anyway, that's how we look at the decals. So the decal sheet, as you can imagine, pretty much as we'd expect. I do like Revel decals because they're never too flat, they're never too glossy, they tend to be that nice satin colour we'd like, um, unlike others out there. Seems to be pretty clear and crisp, the instrument panel obviously we're looking at, it doesn't look too bad at all, and everything seems to be in register, so no complaints with that one at all. Now the parts, as I said, I've already had them out of the bag once because this is take two. Okay, so what we can do is just move down the camera just a little bit closer in. There we go. So you said we've got this whacking great hole down here. The first thing you notice, it's the plastic is really flashy. Classic example here, you see all this? All flashy around the edge. Now, I'm not gonna nitpick here because you know me, um, but I will say in this day and age of everything being as it is and spot on, if um, companies like Trumpeter and Hobby Boss can literally churn out kits at the rate they do without it, there's really no excuse for brand new kits to have flash especially when they are new it's not like it's an old mold um, but certainly it is a little bit flashy some of the parts are a little bit softly done and if I'm honest and I hate to be negative on a kit but this thing has got more sink marks in it than anything I've seen in a long long time there's sink marks on almost every part it's I'm looking at the fuselage if I'm honest and I you know I can't tell if this is light or it's got a sink mark running down the spine here. I don't know, it might be one of those things. It could be just be the light. But generally, as you can see, and there's proof if we need it, it is a new kit. So you might be able to see it just down in there. One of the many cameras we have. We just bring this side one in as well. We're a little bit all over the place today, but you can probably see we've got this nice thing here, catch it in the light in one of them, but it does say Revel 2013. Okay, as you say, it's, you know, uh, there's a couple of little things. You've got ejector pin marks here on the wheel wells. We haven't seen those for a while. You've got the ejector pins are quite heavy um, and all over it. As I say, I hate to be negative about a kit, but you know, it's just, it's, you would expect a little bit more let's carry on before I start making judgments here. Okay, so we've got riveting detail quite nicely, all down on these, no problem with those at all. Seems to be a little bit cleaner on this part, if we're honest. Um, so here's that internal detail uh, on the side walls. You can probably see it just down here. Not looking too bad at all, some nice stuff down there. We've got some nice textures uh, on the control surfaces, showing down and round. Uh, the spinner seems to be all very nice uh, down on there. And there we go. So I'm not an expert on the 109 by a long shout. It's not my field, but I don't know. It just the riveting looks to be overdone. It looks very, very deep. I'm not being funny. The riveting on the intruder is a quarter of what that is. My intruder's going to be my new best friend now. If, you, if you're watching this and it's not in the new show and it's a standalone, I'm building the trumpeter intruder at the moment and it's just off to my side. So that's why I mentioned the, that. Okay, so details as we were running through. Um, this particular one, we've got the floor parts. Uh, again, they seem to be all okay. So you've got a mixture of raised and recessed details down in there. Those look very, very nice. As you can see, you catch them all in the light. You can see all the details. Fuel tanks look quite good. Um, so you've got raised detail on the top half, which is odd. Why would you do that? Okay. As I say, because I don't know the aircraft, it could have been like this, but why have you got raised detail on the top of the fuel tank for the top half and recessed on the bottom? Not too sure about that one. Anyway, uh, moving through, he says, uh, 
yeah. Let's just say I'm not jumping up and down and getting too excited about this one quite yet. So anyway, we've got these tires in two halves, which I'm not the best fan of, if we're honest. Okay, I find them a little bit annoying. Uh, and then going all the way through again, you've got quite a bit of flash down here on this rudder pedal. Um, all these small parts seem to be okay though, if we're honest, they're all right. I say, nice detail on the control surfaces. You've got a nice mixture of re raised and recessed details all over these. So, you know, in some ways, it's, with one hand it's very good, in others it's truly awful. Okay, there's the main wheels again. There we go. And then we've got these. Oof. Okay, so you've got quite nasty sink marks. Um, which camera gets these on these props, which are all going to need filling. And if I'm honest, the props look to be a funny shape as well. Because this one seems to have a nick out of it on this side. But this one doesn't. So I don't know. It may be by the time you sand them. But they are very, very thin. As you can probably see they do bend quite easily on these tips so they're very softly molded okay so next up we have you certainly get a lot of parts in here okay so we've got this is the side uh, fuselage on here this is down on the uh, side of the engine panel again no ejector boom marks down here whatsoever which is a nice touch so if you did want it of a separate part although it's not on the lines you would use, it's certainly a little bit different. Got the bulge here for the different types of guns on the side. This is that top for the wing section. So you've got the internal part in there. So again, very, very shallow ejector pin marks. Probably you can even get away with not even touching those. And some nice raised riveting detail down here in these wells, that's great. The surface just looks a little bit plain. There's a couple of little bits on here, catch it in the light like there, you can see but there's no texture at all. So we've got the different types of guns here. I do know there is replacements for these as well for a couple of aftermarket companies, okay? But as you can see, so we've got different types of um, the sound with the supercharger down here for the intake and the two types of the top as well. Moving down, again, very nice rudder detail, very sharp and very nice and crisp details on those. Okay, we've got the intake down there and the different types of rudder, all looking quite nice. No problem with ejector pin marks, not even inside the actual supercharger. Okay, more rudders and things. So as you say, I think there's a multitude of things coming along. Okay, generally, I must admit, it's a real, real mixed bag because actually it's very nice work along here. All this gear and everything else is quite nice, very sharp, very detailed. Okay, no problems at all. And then other areas are a complete letdown. Okay, last bag up. If we can get into it. Okay, so same thing again. We've got the sink marks down here in the props, same as the other. That's just a duplicate. Another one down here for the control surfaces. Again, it's a duplicate the other. So you've got same problem with the flash on it because it is just the same part coming out. Okay, clear parts. Okay, funny as you can see, it's all bent on one sprue and all over the place, as you can see. But saying that, the clear part does look very, very clear. Oh, well, the camera the side one gets that. But you can see, you've got a little bit of magnifying in there, but nothing too much. Okay, so you've got different types all over this one. They all are very nice, very sharp. We've got no webbing from the molding at all. They look pretty good, no problems with those whatsoever. So really that does put me in a little bit of a position because the kit itself, from me reviewing it point of view, isn't very nice, okay? You've got plenty of problems with that one that you're gonna to have to deal with. Now as a modeler, that's what we do because we're in the business here of actually, you know, construction uh, and assembly and that's what you do you find little problems with it you tweak them you put them right so sanding filling all your basics is fine all i'm saying though for a kit that is brand new apparently brand new tooling and everything else like that it's a little bit flashy it's a little bit softly molded i think perhaps the uh, riveting's a little bit overdone uh, for its scale things I do like about it though is the surface detail on some of the the control surfaces especially very sharp very nice very crisp 
I imagine, and when you do look down here, obviously one of their pre-production builds has done it. As you can see, it does come out to be a really, really nice model. Okay, it's got a little bit more detail than the Hasegawa kits. Okay, and this is where I'm gonna start on a rant now. Um, but it's a little bit like um, the Hasegawa F4 Phantom, okay? got superseded by the Academy one because the Academy one is a little bit more detailed and a few more bits and pieces. I imagine this will be the same thing. This will supersede the Hasegawa uh, 109 series um, of 36 kits because it's a little bit more detailed. Does it make it a better kit? Probably not. It's a little bit more hard work to go together because like the Hasegawa Phantoms, they just drop together overnight, no problem at all. And they're an easy, straightforward kit. The Academy one takes a little bit of work to get it to go, but it is more detailed. So I think if you're you know, weighing up the pros and cons, I don't think this is a game changing kit and a leap forward, but certainly for the price, for the level of detail you'll get in there, if you're a 109 fan, it's a complete must.